Hi, my name is Vincent Burrida. I'm a solution architect for NetFoundry. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to use NetFoundry to enable a DevOps team to connect to a secure environment using the network as code functionality of NetFoundry. So what we can imagine is you, a DevOps engineer, and you've been tasked with deploying a new web server with a new application and to do your development, you have to log in to a private VPC, a secure environment for dedicated for developers. So the traditional way to access such an environment will be to use a Bastion host set up by your network team. Uh, you will have to require an access to this Bastion host. And then from there, you'll be able to jump into your development environment and perform your work. So at NetFoundry, we believe we can find uh, a different way uh, and not use Bastion host or jump server. And we can build a direct connectivity from your machine or your branch of face into your development environment, whether this environment is in a public cloud or on a private cloud. And we do this by increasing security and the performance compared to a traditional VPN. So all this can be done via uh, our console and through following our GUI, but we can also completely automate these steps and that's what we're going to show today. So we've got a Jenkins pipeline here that I'm going to run and this Jenkins pipeline is going to uh, completely automate it, the deployment of the network. So the only input I need to give is give this network a name and I click proceed. Then from there, all the creation of the secure connectivity will be done through the pipeline. So the first step uh, can show you bring the console on the left to show what's going on. So the first step here is to create the network. So when it creates a network, um, the NetFoundry orchestration layer will deploy some compute resource on the NetFoundry virtual private cloud and load our network controller image onto this resource. So this resource will boot up and the network controller will start feeding this information into the console, giving information about uh, the events, uh, the traffic statistic, the alarm, anything that happened on this network will be uh, seen into, into the console. So for this to happen and uh, compute resource to boot up, it takes a bit less than five minutes. I'm going to pause the video now and come back when the network controller is up. So the network is creating now. So what we do is uh, we're going to replace the need of a Bastion host by having uh, this process completely automated and have a dedicated secure connection into your environment. So what it brings is uh, how we can automate the network creation, how we can bring the network creation into a tool like Jenkins and, and enable a full CI CD integration with an infrastructure as code. My network is now created. It took a bit less than five minutes and the pipeline goes into the next step. So following the network creation, you need to, uh, the pipeline will go and deploy a gateway. So a gateway is a lightweight virtual machine that's going to be deployed very near uh, where the application is hosted. So in this case, uh, is the application is hosted in AWS in a private VPC. And what happened, you know, the gateway is in a form of an AMI and the AMI will be deployed into the VPC where the web server is going to be hosted and will be given a unique registration key by the console. So this unique registration key is going to be used by the gateway to authenticate itself to the network. So once it's boot, it will use this key uh, as a certificate to register itself to the network and will wait for the network to get the um, configuration. Okay, so once this is created, um, the next step will go, will be very fast because all the next steps just are, are between the pipeline and the console and it goes very quick. So let me go through these few steps coming, for, coming up. So first is create a service. By service, we mean like linking the application you want to reach, in this case, uh, a web server, 
to the gateway. So what we do is like we give the information in terms of IP address and protocol ports that needs to be linked to this gateway. So this is already configured in the pipeline. And what it's going to do is going to say, give access to um, defined services for, let's say, SSH uh, for uh, admin access, HTTP for maybe UTA team to do some, some test. And we'll be able to link this together in the following step, which is creating the app one. So when we create the app one, what we do is we take a team or a set of, uh, of users and we'll give them the information about which services they be able to access. So if I'm a DevOps engineer and I need to uh, have SSH access into the web server, the, the machine, I can set you know, this access and give me explicitly access to this protocol called set of application, i.e. SSH. If I have a UAT team doing some testing, I can give them a HTTP uh, access, but they won't be able to run SSH into the machine and make changes to this uh, to this configuration. So with that, finally, I've got the ability to give this micro-segmented access and be very specific in terms of what user can or cannot use. So my pipeline is now finished. So I can go into the console and see what has been done. I can uh, look also how I can get myself access to this secure environment. Now I'm gonna go into the console to see what exactly has been created. When I go to the console, I can go to the dashboard of my network and see uh, you know, various options. Yeah, I can see a gateway has been created, a service has been created, but also a client has been created. So that's an important thing. The client is what going to enable myself or my colleagues to access the secure environment. So if I go into the client, I can see it gives me a registration key that I can copy here. And I can complete the install of the client on my machine. So I'm running a Windows machine, but if you go to the NetFoundry uh, web page, you'll see that we've got, uh, we support various type of clients uh, for individual user on Mac or Windows. Or if you connect like a large group of users, you know, in the branch office, you can also have our Novia image for multiple hypervisor. So if I go back to uh, here, so my client is going to be a uh, register here. The registration is going to become very soon. And I can see uh, what different components uh, I have. Okay, I can see the completion is done. Let me take this box. All right, so I can see here, you know, I've got a service, which is the web server I need to configure. And also I have the app one that will give me access to uh, this web server. So what I do now, I'm gonna to try to reach this web server. So this is behind a private IP, non-routable over the public internet because I've got a NetFoundry client running on my network, on my machine, this private IP is intercepted and encapsulated with the NetFoundry protocol and give me this secure access into the server and I can start doing my work and, uh, and configure this server. So if we take a step back of what we've done, you know, we've got these two models. The traditional one on the left would have been to build a secure VPN uh, to the dedicated VPC. If I've got multiple VPNs, multiple VPC, I need to have multiple VPN and multiple bastion host. And what we do here, we add the possibility to completely automate this step using the network as code functionality and the REST API gateway. And we can have a um, multi-access using uh, a simple tool. And we give this access in a simple way. And on top of that, we have a better security than traditional VPN by obfuscating the IP address and making it like a dark network. But we also increase the performance of the connectivity between uh, the user and, and the application. So um, if you want to have more information about this, I, I invite you to follow the link into the video description for an entry block that describes in two more details what's been done with this pipeline. And thanks for watching this video.